Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kieran. I'm a junior doctor and a comedian working in Manchester. Welcome to the new series called Crazy Medical History, where I talk about crazy medical history. Today we're looking at one of the most insane science experiments of all time, Rosenhan's being sane in insane places. The premise of it is this. If someone is inside a psychiatric hospital, can you actually tell if they're insane or not? Does just being in that environment make you seem insane? The way they did this experiment would in no way be allowed to be done now. And you'll understand why soon. It's one of the craziest things that I've ever learned about. Stick around to find out more. As always, if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. In the 1970s, there was a psychologist called David Rosenhan. Rosenhan said, it's clear that we cannot distinguish the sane from the insane in psychiatric hospitals. The hospital itself imposes a special environment in which meanings of behavior can easily be misunderstood. The consequences to patients hospitalized in such an environment, the powerlessness, depersonalization, segregation, mortification and self-labeling seem undoubtedly counter-therapeutic. So this is what he did to counter it. He took eight mentally healthy participants, one of which was himself, and got them to fake auditory hallucinations, got them to fake hearing voices. These voices only said empty, hollow or thud. That's it. The reason he chose these is because they don't point to any specific psychiatric diagnosis. None of these people, who he called pseudo-patients because they weren't actually patients, had any history of mental illness before, and all of them, after seeing a doctor, were able to gain admission to a psychiatric hospital. When inside, they behaved perfectly normally. They said they felt fine and weren't hearing any voices at all. These pseudo-patients were kept in the hospital between seven and 52 days. Can you imagine saying you feel completely fine and being admitted to hospital for almost two months? Seven of the eight were diagnosed with schizophrenia and remission, and one was diagnosed with manic depressive psychosis. The average stay was 19 days. The only thing they actually did when they were inside was observe what was going on, so how people were being treated and what the staff were doing. And they used to take notes about this. And apparently what happened is this behavior of taking notes got labeled as note-taking behavior by one of the nurses and was considered to be pathological. So they considered that note-taking behavior to be of mental illness, when actually they were just taking notes. Once they were admitted to these institutions, the only way that they managed to get out is by admitting that they had a mental illness and also by agreeing to take antipsychotic medication, which obviously they flushed down the toilet. When these pseudo patients were released, they actually said that they felt dehumanized when they were inside, that staff would talk about them as if they weren't there, and that their privacy was often taken over. Not one member of staff recognized that these weren't patients with mental illnesses and that they were just faking it. Which when you think about it is so difficult to get your head around and so crazy. So here comes part two, my favorite bit. Rosenhan published his research and one disgruntled hospital said to Rosenhan, we can tell between the sane and the insane. So I'll tell you what, you send some more patients in, some more pseudo patients in the next three months, and we'll tell you who they are. We'll be able to pick them out from the normal patients, and we'll be able to tell you who actually doesn't have any mental illness. And he said, okay. For the next three months, I'll be sending pseudo patients to your hospital, and in three months time, I want you to tell me who they are. During that three month period, 193 patients were admitted to the hospital. The hospital suspected 41 patients as being imposters and 42 others as being suspected imposters. The truth? Rosenhan hadn't sent any patients to the hospital. All of the patients that they'd identified were real patients. It truly was difficult to tell the sane from the insane in insane places. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you like this sort of thing, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you check out the Crazy Medical History series, where I'll talk about loads of different interesting parts of medicine. As always, take care and stay safe.